Hey what's up everyone, today I wanted to talk about a pretty large scale live production that I was hired to film over the past couple of days. So unfortunately to start this off I can't actually show any of the actual footage from the event since the client specifically requested that it stay internal. However, with that being said, I did want to show you guys a couple of BTS scenes and to talk about how I was able to film a live production as a solo operator, get clean audio from the soundboard, as well as how I managed to use two cameras at the same exact time to get two different camera angles, set up framing and composition all at the same time without disrupting the production or getting in the way of actors or the audience. So. You'll definitely want to stick around until the end where I'm going to teach you guys the camera setup that really blew my clients away when it came to the final product. Alright, so let's get straight into it. So I know that I always mentioned that gear is not everything. However, sometimes having the right gear for the job is really important and it can actually mean the difference between you being able to do the job and execute your vision or failing at delivering on your promises. So. With that being said, the first setup that I wanted to go over is going to be my ACAM setup. So for this setup, I was using the Suray SVT-75, which is this uh, set of legs down here. So this is the SVT-75 Pro, which has the SVH-15 fluid head. By the way, stay tuned to the channel since I'm going to be going over this and getting back into the swing of doing gear reviews on some of the other products that I have sitting around that I think you guys will really enjoy. And I'll be making dedicated reviews for all of the things that you're going to be seeing in this video if I don't already have one up. So you'll definitely want to be subscribed for that. But back to this setup. So this tripod is absolutely outstanding and making this project honestly would not have been possible without it since it has a great counterbalance system which really allowed me to dial in my balance for putting on the Sony FX3 with a 200 to 600 f5.6 to 6.3 lens with absolutely no problems. I could set my framing, let go without even having to lock any of the axes. And this was really, really critical for me since I needed to tend to both this camera as well as my other camera. And I didn't really want to have to keep remembering to lock and unlock axes and with some tripods, if you put a really heavy setup like this on with extra monitors and audio and all of that stuff, it can get really bulky, really heavy. And if you let go of the handles back here, some of those tripods would send your camera tumbling forward or backward, which is obviously not what you want when you're trying to juggle a whole bunch of things at one time. So absolutely cannot recommend this enough. The event was also over an hour long, and relying solely on battery power is obviously not really a good look, especially since you're being hired as a professional. So for this case, I used the small rig V-mount plate, which mounted my small rig VB99 uh, V-mount battery, which is a 99 watt hour battery, and it's great and versatile since you can take it on a plane without any trouble. And it also has a USB-C output as well as a DTAP output, which leads me to the monitor that I was using, which is of course going to be the Atomos Ninja 5 Plus. If you haven't seen my video on this monitor, definitely go ahead and check that out. I'm gonna leave it linked right up here. But it's a really helpful tool, especially when you're doing live production where every second counts, lighting may not necessarily be under your control and you have to respond in real time to those exposure changes. So this is where the false color really comes in and really helps out since you can quickly identify where things are a little bit too hot or a little bit too cold as far as your exposure and you can dial in as appropriate. So. That is definitely something that is really important that really sped my workflow up quite a bit. And the next thing with my FX3 kit that I built out was the Sony top handle for the FX3 and the ECM XM1. So I didn't actually really use the shotgun mic, but I wanted to have a good backup in case any of my other uh, audio that I was recording directly off of the board ended up failing and I needed to have something to deliver to the client. So that is something that I would always recommend is having backups and if possible backups for your backups. Plus 
If you don't have scratch audio on your primary camera and you're recording external audio, it can be a bit of a pain to sync up afterwards if you're not using timecode. If you're using waveforms, especially in DaVinci Resolve, you can just highlight everything, click uh, align by waveform, and it'll find all of the waveform peaks in all of your video clips and align all of them automatically on your timeline, which is an extraordinarily helpful tool. But again, I'm going to be going more into how I actually recorded audio in the audio section of this video. And finally, I used a Polar Pro Basecamp matte box with the VND 2 to 5 stop filter. Though the event was indoors and it was relatively dark inside, I use Cine EI on the FX3, and so I really only can use the two base ISOs. Though you can adjust ISO in the camera, it's really only just adjusting your viewing exposure, not the actual camera ISO. So for me, 800 was underexposed, so I needed to bump it straight up to 12,800. And thankfully the FX3's 12,800 ISO noise level is very, very low. And since I wanted to shoot the performance wide open on my lens, I needed to have a little bit of ND to ensure that I was keeping my overall exposure within an acceptable range, not overexposing it too much. Although S-Log3 does do well if you overexpose by a little bit say 1.3 to 1.5 stops. Before I get into my B-cam setup, which really wowed my clients, I wanted to touch briefly on audio. So I always say this, but you can have the most beautiful video in the world with the most expensive cameras on the planet. But if your audio isn't clean and doesn't sound good, it can really take your viewers out of the production and ruin their experience with the final product. So with that in mind, how do you as a videographer get good live audio for an event? Well, my recommendation is to pick up this little guy. This is the Zoom F3 field recorder. Along with this, you're going to want to pick up a couple of other accessories. So I would recommend picking up a good quality XLR cable, probably something in the 15 foot range, just so that we have a little bit of latitude in case you need to put it further away from the board or you need to hide it away or something like that. I'd also recommend picking up one of these guys. So this is an XLR to quarter inch cable as well. Though it's not entirely necessary, I would recommend picking up both of them as well as a nice battery bank. Like this one here from OmniCharge. This is the OmniCharge 20 Plus. And as with every video, I wanted to mention that I will be leaving links to everything that I discuss in the description so that way if you would like to check anything out for yourself, please use those links since it's going to help the channel out and it's not going to cost you anything extra. But Back to the video. So the Zoom F3 runs off of two AAA batteries normally, but I don't really like that for using it in a professional setup. And so instead I prefer to use USB-C power delivery on the side of the F3 and just use one of the USB outputs on the OmniCharge 20 Plus. That provides you more than enough power to run this for an entire day event. You can actually run this for several days straight since the F3 doesn't really take up a lot of power. And another thing that is really great about the F3 is that it records in 32-bit float, which you may have heard from other YouTubers that it's kind of like raw for cameras, and it is. If you record something and it clips, or basically if you're not familiar with filmmaking and audio lingo, it goes above the threshold for your recording and it starts to distort you can actually bring those levels back down and you can recover that audio, which is not possible with other types of recording if you're using 24-bit or other lower bit depths. So that is a really great thing since it allows you to have a little bit more latitude in terms of your audio levels. You don't have to think as much about how hot your mics are or anything like that. You just basically plug and play. Um, however, I would always recommend you to monitor very quickly just to make sure that everything is coming through cleanly. So that's a pro tip for you guys. But with that being said, you also definitely wanna make sure that you become friends with your sound guy. So if you're coming on location, whether it's a place that you're familiar with or not familiar with, definitely go ahead to that sound guy, reach out to him, be nice, be courteous, and he will hook you up. If you just have all of the stuff ready to go, if you know your equipment, you can just relay all of that information to him. 
he'll be able to figure out exactly how to fit you into the audio board and hook you up. All right, so finally we get to the B camera setup, which I'm sure is the one that you guys are most excited about since it's a pretty interesting setup and I don't really think that I've ever seen anybody talk about something like this on YouTube. So starting it off at the base, I'm using this Ulanzi Komen Zero Y F30 travel tripod. This is uh, with the standard photography ball head. And the reason why I'm using this head and not a video head is because I'm just using this as a base. I don't need it to pan, I don't need it to tilt or anything like that. I just need it to hold a load right atop. So that is that. Then on top of that, I build it up with the DJI RS3 Pro, which is a gimbal that I've featured pretty extensively on this channel. But this setup, again, I think is pretty novel and pretty interesting, and it really showcases the versatility of this gimbal better than any of the other videos that I've done personally, and pretty much any that I've seen. So on top of that gimbal, I put my Sony a7R5 with the Sony 24-105 f4 lens. I also attached the DJI follow focus motor to my zoom ring, and I mounted the Raveneye transmission system to the bottom of the gimbal, and that pretty much rounds out the basic setup. Now, I'm not gonna go too in-depth here about all of the intricacies of the setup. I'll save that for a future video where I'm going to break it down entirely, go over all of the settings and everything that you'll need to get it set up for your video projects. So you'll definitely wanna stick around for it. You won't wanna miss it. But anyway, with this system, I was able to remotely control the gimbal camera settings, and even the physical zoom ring from approximately 100 feet away on the other side of the room during the play with a whole room full of audience members, cast members, crew, lighting, all of that stuff, and it never lost signal, not even once, and I was able to execute every move pretty much flawlessly. I could also make use of active track and my choice of either gyroscopic gimbal control by the iPhone's gyroscope or using the on-screen joystick on the iPhone, depending on what situation I was in. Plus, another thing is that the Raven Eye even allowed me to monitor with false color and a Sony S-Log3 LUT so that way I could get a real sense of what my final product was going to look like as I was shooting. So overall, this experience was really fun and pretty exciting, and I'm so glad that I was able to actually work on this project and that I was able to do things that were kind of innovative, like try out this new gimbal idea that I had been toying around with in the real world and to give you guys a sense of how this type of setup would actually work. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this little story time type video and got some ideas to use in your own jobs or your own little short films where you may have to come up with some creative solutions to some pretty complex problems. And I hope it inspires you to get out there and create the content that you love. But with that being said, if you guys did enjoy the video, a like would be greatly appreciated and comment down below any tips or tricks that you guys have for doing any live productions. Also, share this with all your filmmaker friends or anyone that you think might benefit from seeing it. And again, subscribe for more content. Peace.